Thank you all very much. I'm thrilled to be included in this uh, session and, um, and um, look forward to the discussion, so I'll try to stay on time. Um, here are my disclosures, and I will do my best to avoid introducing any bias into my talk. I think it's interesting reflecting on this. This is probably why I was selected for this talk, because I've worked with industry. Um, and um, I, I think it's wonderful that we see this session as a partnership between SAGES and the ASE. Uh, tribute to our current SAGES president, Dan Jones, who was president of the ASE a few years ago. And I'd also like to highlight Dr. Richard Resnick, who's part of this session this morning, is also a past president and is our esteemed Stortz lecturer uh, for an address tomorrow. So I would invite all of you to join us in Austin, Texas next month for this meeting. Um, so here's the, the, the title. I'm going to immediately just kind of knock out two terms and say friend with a caveat. Uh, how many folks in the audience represent industry or work for industry? Okay, great. So I will try to present this in a balanced fashion, and I hope I do not offend anyone. Um, so this is where I started, 1998 Dallas. Uh, I was a research fellow. This was our skills lab. I had nothing to do with the industry donations except I got to use the equipment. And pictured here is Mrs. Stortz in 99 on her way to Sages in San Antonio. She stopped in Dallas and paid us a visit. We had been uh, granted uh, that equipment shown here. We had support from another industry uh, partner, and that allowed us to conduct a, a pivotal research study uh, on laparoscopic skills training, published the first uh, paper in the literature on transferability uh, to a clinical environment. That was very positive. We could have not have done that without industry support. Um, I then moved to New Orleans, started up a simulation program and center um, in New Orleans, and I'll point out two individuals. One's uh, Dr. Jim Korndorf, also on this uh, panel. One's Dimitri Stefanidis. And needless to say, we had a blast uh, exploring different technologies, had uh, uh, partnerships with industry, and did a, a, a phenomenal amount of research in a short amount of time. I then moved back to Dallas and, and had a leadership role in our sim center there. Uh, and you can see various pieces of equipment. Sometimes we had to buy things. Sometimes we had them donated. Uh, you heard from Jim Lau's talk, there's always resource constraints. Uh, and even if you have the space, you might not have the money to buy your supplies or vice versa. Uh, and so in my experience in, in hosting all of these types of courses for our surgery residents, um, you can imagine the equipment that comes to bear. And whenever we are able to partner with industry, it's extremely helpful. Um, including kind of renovations, immersive uh, team training environments and such. Uh, and then very exciting for me uh, is this new Sim Center on our campus going up September of this year will be open, uh, 28,000 square feet. So we, we expect not to have space problems, but yet the programming aspect already kind of uh, portends that we will have conflicts. Um, and it, it's going up. We have a, our new hospital on the right background. You can see that building on a Sunday morning being imploded. That was our old hospital. And then this new uh, building is going up where we will have occupancy. I agree with what Jim said. You have to start with what your mission is and what your programming is. Who are your learners? Who are your constituents, your stakeholders? And we're now charged with a campus-wide integration plan uh, for all of UME, all of GME, School of Health Professions, eventually the healthcare system, and of course, continuing uh, education for physicians. And so it's interesting, in my big uh, state institution, it has not been this gravy train of how much can we get from industry at this point. Uh, because of a lot of conflict of interest navigation, purchasing rules, grants and contracts, development office, and it's a very interesting navigation. With that being said, we certainly do have some partnerships uh, that have been aiding. Uh, so suffice to say, in my 20 years dabbling in this arena, uh, I would view uh, industry partners very much as a friend uh, and something that we have to carefully guide to avoid some of the conflicts that, that can arise. Uh, specifically, I'd like to, in the context of this talk to point out some words of, of caution on a couple of areas. Uh, so I still view them as friends, but I think I would say uh, certainly friends with a few caveats. And there are two, two potential areas that I have seen uh, arise. One is, oftentimes when we're working with our industry partners, uh, they are trained in marketing. Their motivation may be ultimately sales and bottom line for their company. And that's their job. They are doing their job. But they may not be um, uh, educators per se or share some common purpose around the learners. And uh, again, I don't, uh, this isn't a blame game, it's just an acknowledgement that the motivations may be different 
uh, and certainly the backgrounds may be different. And I'll give you an example here. I've seen this sometimes in CME courses or courses we run with multiple uh, sponsors at once, multiple instruments on the back table, and a sense of competition that may arise on occasion between different corporate reps uh, to say, no, please use my device. No, no, use my trocar, use my uh, energy source. And so I, I think it's extremely important, and Sages does a wonderful job with this with the courses over the years that I've been involved with, of setting the ground rules uh, and saying no sales uh, occur uh, in this environment. And, and they do the same thing with the Learning Center. Uh, and I've taken on that mantra uh, of a, of a pre-brief, a huddle before an event, uh, to make sure we're sharing the same uh, framework, uh, that in that uh, sanctuary of learning, it's about learning, not about any particular company or their device. Secondly, I think we have to acknowledge that we all come from different backgrounds. And uh, sometimes our corporate partners, I can talk to them endlessly, but they just don't have the same mental framework for what a curriculum is or what metrics really mean to us as surgical educators. And, and so these are the things that matter to me, the curriculum and, and the metrics. And these are terms that we all live by now, the science behind education, the science behind simulation. Are we representing the skills that we want to represent? Can we discriminate different levels of performance according to the metrics that we're using? Are the metrics reliable uh, forms of, of measurement? Uh, measurement? And are we uh, really bestowing transferability into other environments that, that matter? And that's the whole purpose we're there. And, and so that's really what I'm coming to the table with. Sometimes when we deal with uh, uh, simulators, especially some of the more modern technology, virtual reality, you know, what we're hearing from the other uh, side is look how realistic this looks. Not necessarily are we teaching the right concepts uh, in a simulator or the correct procedural steps. Uh, let alone some of the measurements. So this is the side that, I, that I, I think we as educators fall on and need to fall on. And so I'll give you an example. This is a study that we did as a multi-institutional trial a few years ago in Texas through a consortium uh, that we call TASL, Texas Association of Surgical Skills Labs, a grassroots organization. We meet one day uh, after Labor Day every year and share information and know-how and curricula uh, and it's been a, a nice endeavor for about 10 years for us. Um, Kent Van Sickle led this, led this project and first authored the paper on it. And, and he had this concept, can we do a mobile training unit? Can we share some of this expensive technology? Uh, and, and made some deals with the company. Normally, if you add up three months, that amount per month uh, times two units, that's $30,000. Well, they were willing to waive that and just charge uh, the installation cost and their rep uh, coming to uh, install it and get it all running. And so we did this trial, um, a, a curricular development and, and kind of feasibility on implementation at multiple institutions, proficiency-based, a psychomotor drill on the endo bubble, um, expert-derived proficiency levels, kind of a usual recipe. Uh, and we did a pre and post test on the colonoscopy uh, module. Uh, we used the validated gauges uh, instrument uh, and uh, also looked at simulator metrics. And we had some pretty reasonable outcomes. Um, the simulation curriculum was feasible um, with a reasonable number of repetitions. I always love the variability involved with number of reps and number of hours uh, since we're looking at a performance endpoint. Uh, and we were rated by the learners as, as having reasonable levels of difficulty on a Likert scale. When you look at the, the metrics, uh, gauges is at the top, and there was a significant uh, improvement. Now, granted, there's limitations. It was non-blinded and, and so on. But that really, in this trial, was our gold standard. And then if you look at the simulator metrics, uh, about half of them turned out to have uh, statistical significance. And you could argue on mucosal surface inspection, we weren't overtly teaching that. But it, I find it remarkable that it just outright stayed the same. And so I use this as an example of a positive relationship with industry. We could not have done this trial without them, and it was a proof and concept that we could do it. We have financial support, it fostered educational research, and I truly believe ultimately our learners benefited. But it's also an example of some of the limitations in, in some of the simulator-generated metrics, and I always say don't assume the metrics are valid until you see the data. 
Uh, so in, in conclusion, I think partnerships with industry uh, may substantially augment our opportunities for simulation-based training. Some of these things we just can't do without some of these levels of support. Having common goals is, is key, and uh, sticking to a foundation, educational, educational science, I think is uh, critically important. Thank you very much.